Hi folks, I'm Meath with Two Guys Ride. Today Rob and I are out here at a beautiful Mopar car show and we we uh, ran into Randy again. Now, not on purpose. We were just going down the road and thought, we need to check out that car and came around and who do we find it belongs to but Randy. So Randy, tell us what we have behind us. Well, this is a 1959 Dodge Sierra Custom Spectator Station Wagon. Whew. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> that's what it is, yeah. Man, that is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Look at all the chrome work on the front end. Yeah. Oh, man, and you, you just got this recently. I just got this two weeks ago, so I can't tell you lots and lots of details about it, but I know a little bit. Well, I think, I think, I think the car is gonna speak for itself. Yeah. Now, um, I like the the hint to the to the aircraft industry to rockets, uh, all, you know, what the front emblem on the hood there. Yeah. Um, and then just all that massive chrome, it's just all over, especially something this size. It's incredible, and and this is being the Dodge Sierra Custom makes this a top of the line wagon for 1959 for Dodge. They also made what was called a, just a Sierra, but not Custom, okay. which would be a step down. The difference is, as you were mentioning, Chrome is the Sierra Custom got wider trim down the side okay. and the, the ribbed or fluted, uh, you know, like Lines, that, and yep. just more, more slathered with more Chrome. The other difference was that the Sierra Custom is a nine passenger wagon, meaning that it has a third row seat way in the back, okay. whereas the Sierra was a six passenger wagon and no seat in the back. And what and what what did the literature refer to that area as? They call it the observation lounge. <laughs> the observation lounge. I, I love it. We what? like to call the car the vomit comet because anybody that remembers these back when they were kids, as you'd sit back there and you're going backwards and the exhaust comes yes, in and, and, and the kids the always threw up back there. So. <laughs> the observation lounge. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay, yeah. fancy fancy name for torture there. <laughs> okay. So man, I I love the, the the emblems just going down you know you got them up on the side here and then on the hubcaps as well yeah, the lancer emblem because of course dodge is always famous for using the lancer sure. symbol on cars yeah do you th is this an original color combination do you know? it is yeah okay. and uh the fellow i bought it from said that they called it aquamarine and white okay Which it almost you know it's seems... hard to tell in the bright sunlight it almost looks like a cream white that, that particular I think color. it is kind of a soft white, yeah, or cream white, yeah. Because compared to the to the white walls, right, yeah. It's, it's a, but it's beautiful. I just love that color. Yeah, and those hubcaps are out of this world. Yeah, I, I bought this on a website called Bring a Trailer, and on that website, people post comments about it while the auction is right. going on. And some guy said, "I hope whoever buys that wagon welds those hubcaps on because <laughs> they're going to be gone pretty quickly." <laughs> And you said, good luck finding them amongst my other cars, right? <laughs> you can find them, yeah. Um, interesting how they mount the, the mirrors, you know, out and not on the door panels. Yeah. You know, just... And, just... and the driver's side exterior mirror is remote controlled from the driver's seat. It is. Yes. All right. Well, we'll come back to that in a minute and take a look at those here. But here you got the nice custom label. Another interesting feature, as long as we're going by, is that... This one happens to have swivel seats in it. Now, that's something that the uh, the previous owner installed, but that wasn't available from Dodge. The only way this car would come was with a bench seat. So okay. it's something that's been added, and uh, and I like it. It's it it, but it's a Chrysler. It is a Chrysler uh, seat yeah, okay. from a different car. Yeah. Um, so the other side does the same thing. Yeah. So you you know if you were out doing a picnic, whatever, you'd have a place to sit. Yet be outside that's right yeah so while while we're on the uh, interior here I, I'm going to assume just from the how new everything was this has been redone at some point yes the, okay the owner the people I bought it from redid the interior themselves and they really? repainted it themselves boy yeah. they did a good job did a nice job yeah so up on the uh, the, the, the dashboard on the far left you've got the push button transmission correct but there's no park no park no uh, it just goes into neutral and then you set the parking brake 
okay? And Dodge also included a little wedge, a wheel chalk, so that if you were on a steep hill and you didn't trust your parking brake or yeah. it wasn't whatever, there's a wheel chalk included in the back in the kit. To, to chalk your wheel. Interesting. <laughs> so, okay. I'm not sure whether that gave me a great sense of peace or confidence just a in the car. Piece going, of wood, just a wedge okay, piece of wood. In case our car doesn't work, here's a wedge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then, of course, you got this big long speedometer at the top. Where is this? Now, we were we were talking a little bit earlier. There, up on top of the dashboard, to the right of the speedometer, there is a dial, yes. and it appears to go left, a right to left. So it starts on off, then goes to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yes. And we've determined, uh, you've determined that it's not the cruise control. No. It's not a, a setting for the headlamps. No. We don't know what it is, though. It's not a speed minder. I can't figure out what it is. So, you know, the reason we talk about it is if any of the viewers know what that is. Now, I can tell you what I do know about it is that when you turn that knob, it just turns around and around and around and around. It doesn't. There's no notches. There's no notches and there's no pointer to know what it is that you're selecting. So you uh, I can't really have no figure... idea what number you're on or, I mean, a vague idea. Anyway. So, if any of you know what that knob does, leave a comment down below and we'll pass it on to Randy if he doesn't see it in the comments. Okay, then I'll okay so we had mentioned earlier about the uh, remote control mirror. Yes. Is that this? Yes, that's it. So yes. what's this black that's, button? That's a light. Uh, so I was when hoping you... you'd tell me ejector button. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. No, it's just a light so that you reminding you to take the e-brake off or the parking brake off. Yeah. You know, I know I know someone's garage at Chanhassen, you could just park this in and tell him, give him a hint that you'd like that, and he'd probably have it done for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> was, was that correct? The Cars Against Crime Garage? Okay. Um, what what was this? That's the switch for the rear window, the tailgate window. That, was it powered? Yes, powered tailgate window. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you could on random just on a whim. Exhaust people, you know. Yes. All right, we're talking too much. Let's give them a little exhaust. When the kids are a little too rowdy back there, we'll get them to sleep real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the uh, okay. So then, all right. That's for the, it's for the buttons down here. And starting, was there any special sequence like you, or was it just just turn, turn the key, key. like normal? Yeah. Okay, and it just starts. Yeah. All right. Uh, I like the rear view mirror sitting on the dashboard. That was done for a number of years. Yeah, it was. They called that, uh, I can't remember now, Miramatic or Mirror Magic, Miramatic. And it's an automatic dimming uh, feature that, so if somebody's behind you and their lights right. are, you know, it dims itself. Like yeah. modern cars have. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but this little switch is right on the mirror there for you. Yeah. And in the middle you had just AM radio? Just an AM radio. Okay. Of course, a tube radio, so... You oh. turn it on, you got to wait for it to warm up. To warm up, yes. <laughs> uh, and then right above that, I'm assuming an ashtray. That's an ashtray, yes. And then, of course, over there, your, your um, glove compartment. Yeah. Along with the, one of the Lancer symbols there. Of course, you can't have enough Lancers on Now, I, I do like uh, Wally. Is it, we have Wally and... and uh, Wally and the Beaver. Wally and the Beaver. Yeah. Right there uh, in the I, back seat. Good company. When I bought this car, I sent a picture of it to my brother, and he emailed back. He said, that's a neat-looking car. He goes, did it come with Ward and June and Wally and the Beave? And I went, no, but that's a pretty good idea. So at the car show here today, I've been introducing myself to people as Ward, and this is my wife, June. <laughs> Wally and the Beaver in the car. The, um, <laughs> did, did, the, did the bench seat fold forward at all? Yes, it does. Collapse, so you yes. can have a flat floor? All the seats will all fold down flat all the way up to the back of the driver's seat so you could haul man. sheets of plywood or in like In there that. and still close your door. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Now, coming back to the observation lounge. Okay. I'd hate to miss, <laughs> miss, miss call it here. Uh, so this obviously would just fold. Well, actually, this would fold up, right? The bottom part would fold up. Yeah. Against the door that lays down. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, you had, it, at least you had room for someone to ride, exhaust or not, you know, for short trips or whatever. But uh, I could see that being a little nauseous after a while. <laughs> it's either that or all the green in one place. You know, you get the green seats and the green carpet. You know, this is interesting. It's all carpeted in there. Yeah. And when you fold all the seats down, they're all nicely carpeted and very on the nicely back. done and very nice So it carpet. all matches. Well, all this matches. was the top of the line, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, did the roof rack come with standard, too? Came uh, as an option. As an option, okay. Yeah. Could you operate the power window from the key switch yes. back here, then, yes. too, as well? Yeah. All right. Um, I love the step 
bumper yeah, or the little when rubber. The, when the tailgate goes down, then the kids would step here to get into the bath. Okay. Well, or I suppose if you want to put something on your luggage rack, you could use that there too. The taillights, I love these these slanted cones. Aren't those great? And I they, love them. The way they cut it on the bias like that, they really become side markers too, because from the side you can you see can view the, the light. You know, but that wasn't a requirement at that. At this it wasn't. Point. No. But okay. Just a good engineering idea. Yeah. yeah. Really, because and these are just reflectors. Right. Okay. Boy. You know, it, it, and it's interesting you know, with the tail fins, you know, you have all that space. And then this is what they use out of it. But you, the meats, these are large, yeah. but it's just not the whole area. Yeah. And you see that on some, uh, some of the models where, it's, you know, they go away from filling the whole back of the fin with the light to using a part of it. But they still chromed out the rest of it. Looks really nice. Right. All right. Here's another interesting thing here. Right on the side here is a removable panel. Okay. That panel drops off and the spare tire is behind that. So it would pull out like this? And there's just a big wing nut that you unscrew with your hand and then you can take the spare tire out and yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So it, so it's not a drop down, it's a pull out or would it drop you I know you've only had it for two weeks. You haven't you have we need to puncture his tire quick. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. I'm joking. But that's what it but does. But that's where it's under. So it wasn't in the way of the passengers. Exactly. Yes. Now, if this was, like I talked about earlier, if this was a Sierra wagon, not a custom, six passenger, then the spare tire would be in the Inside. way back. Inside. Yeah. So not only did you have more room for people, you had more room for uh, storing things. Exactly. Yeah. On, on the custom. Yeah. So what was your draw into getting this? It's cute. I saw it uh, on Bring a Trailer, and I just thought that is the... I've been kind of looking for a station wagon for a while and just couldn't find anything that tripped my trigger. I saw this and I went, oh, that's it. I'm buying it. And <laughs> I just had to have it. And I'm well, really, really happy I bought it. I'm yeah. just thrilled with it. It's just it, fantastic. It's fun, to, it's fun to see something out of this era, especially yeah. like a station wagon where they were so big. Yeah. You know, it's comfortable, I'm sure, to ride it. It is. I mean, it just yeah. floats down the road. And everybody smiles when they see it. It just makes you happy. You know, it reminds you of happy times. You happy know? times are going on. Glad I'm not in that back seat anymore. Yeah. It has this cool curved glass here on the back. And yeah, yeah, I don't know if that comes across tinted. in camera, but that I, I, you tinted can see Tinted as well, yeah. It was tinted. Yeah. Yeah, all the windows are tinted. Now, on the, on the, just the Sierra, would that have been tinted or that have been, oh, not that sure. That I don't know. Okay. All right. Could the could the passengers control the window in the no. in the rear? No, no. So really, you had you. I mean, you had all the control. Yeah, the way it should be. <laughs> the way it should be. <laughs> so, um, you know, you you've collected a, a number of cars. I have a number, yeah. And uh, most of them, at least for as I know, are Chrysler or Mopar. Right. Yes. So, what was your draw to that? I mean. It's just cars you saw in childhood? It or? just kind of happened that way. Uh, it's a little bit of a long story, but, you know, I guess when I started collecting cars, I had this notion I was going to collect Chevys, kind of like everybody does, really. Right. And uh, I do have a nice 60 Chevy Impala convertible that you've seen. Yeah. And, uh, and then I saw this Chrysler 300F convertible at Barrett-Jackson, and I didn't know what it was. But I thought that's the most beautiful car I'd ever seen. And I thought, i got to get one of those someday. Well, now I have two of them that are fully restored. But that kind of got me in touch with the Chrysler Club and the Chrysler people. And they're all very, very good people that are very helpful to help you find parts and get them restored and all those okay. types of things. And I just kind of got drawn that way. And, and then I realized, you know, if I was going to get some other brand of car, say a you know, because I'm a Finn car guy, if I was going to get like a Cadillac, right, would be fun. But then I got to figure out who's got parts and how to get parts, and it's going to be a whole nother. And task. now you have a network. I have a network. It's like a big family. It kind of is, and yeah. so it just kind of keeps going. So, yeah. Well, Randy, we're sure glad that we ran into you again. Well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Especially, we kept saying, I know I know he's got a new car, but we don't know what it is, and <laughs> here we are. So thanks again for sharing uh, the story of your car and taking your time with us. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.